Good morning guys, today we're going to be looking at an irrigation problem. So uh, I'm going to start a zone that isn't this sprinkler right here. So I'm going to start something else and you'll see what happens. Why is this running? It'll get worse. This is not the zone that's on right now. So a zone on the opposite side of the property is on, but notice how much water is coming out of this sprinkler. So we're going to troubleshoot this and see what's going on. Uh, this will just eventually leak constantly. You can kind of see that there, just oozing water. So while this isn't a super big problem, uh, since I get my water from the canal, which is right there, it is wasteful. And uh, obviously this is water that's not going to the zone that's on. So that zone is going to be getting less water volume. So uh, again, let's get back to troubleshooting why this is happening and see if we can fix it. Okay, if you guys haven't watched any of my other sprinkler videos, let me give you a quick tour. So, um, over to the right here, I have my pump that draws water from the canal. The water comes over here into this manifold thing here. And water can go to any one of these five uh, zone valves. These particular zone valves are made by Rainbird. Uh, they are a DV series valve. And the way it works is the wiring from the sprinkler controller comes in through here. All these have a, a one wire that goes to common. Whoops, cell phone ringing, hang on. Sorry about that, guys. Where was I? I think I was talking about the common wire. So, yeah, all these solenoids here, these are 24 volt AC solenoids that each have one wire going to a common. You can see back here under this yellow wire nut, hopefully. And the other uh, wire from the solenoid goes to the individual uh, zone triggering valves, or zone triggering circuits on the sprinkler controller. So, Anyway, back to what we were talking about. So we, when any one of these other zones is on, we saw in the backyard that there was one sprinkler that always kind of oozed water. I narrowed it down, happens to be this zone right here. So there's a couple troubleshooting steps you can try. And I'm by no means an expert here. I just kind of read the direction. So I'm kind of figuring this out with you guys. So first step, let's turn on the pump uh, just so we can get some pressure. Okay, our pump is running. So the first way to try to solve this problem what normally happens is you can get debris in the diaphragm down here that kind of prevents it from shutting correctly. There could be a tear. So Rainbird says there's a couple ways you can flush these out. You can loosen this bleeder screw, and it's also a bleeder screw and one that lets you actually activate the zone manually. They said to loosen this and turn so, and let it run for a minute. So I'm going to do that. That's half a turn, one full turn. So we'll let that run for a minute. Hopefully that's going to solve the problem. I know for a fact it's not in this case, only because I tried it already probably see where this is going. I'm going to let that run for a minute. Left that bleeder screw open for about a minute and I switched it to another zone so the pump is still on right now but notice we're still leaking water. So that didn't fix the problem in my case. Um, another thing you could try is disconnecting the electrical power from the solenoid just to make sure there's not some kind of like maybe your, maybe your timer is actually sending voltage and current to that solenoid when it shouldn't be. Um, I tried that already in my case, you know, I disconnected one of the two wires to the solenoid, same problem. So I think we actually have a mechanical problem inside that valve. So the next step is gonna be take, to take the valve apart. Okay, so we're back at the sprinkler pump. I'm gonna start taking the valve apart. I'm just gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver, loosen these screws, and we'll see what we see. Hopefully just a piece of dirt. So these valves are not that old, they may be four years old or so. Okay, almost done. We got two more screws left. I think I mentioned before these are Rainbird DVF valves. They're about 20 bucks a piece or so, they're not all that expensive. And you can actually get rebuild kits for them. Get them at Home Depot. I think they're about four bucks or so. Let's see what we see. Let's take this diaphragm out. So let me get you repositioned so you can see what's going on here. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit better now. So this piece right here, this diaphragm comes off. I'll take this out and see if we have any tears or anything like that. I see a little... Of course, that's the one that came out. There we go. Oh, there's some rocks in here. I wonder if that's part of the problem. What I found. 
Where are we? Some debris. Of course, we're not going to focus. Let's see if we can zoom out. Why don't they make a camera that focuses well? So that was in there. So that might have been our problem. Uh, I'm just going to inspect this diaphragm for cracks. Let's bring you over to the bench here. I kind of didn't think it was going to be an actual problem with the diaphragm, only because, like I said, this thing isn't that old. I don't see any obvious problems with it. I don't see any obvious gouges or holes or tears. But if you have tears in yours, this is the kit you can get at Home Depot. It's like four or five bucks. And this kit works on, as it says in the package, the CP, CPF, DV, DVF, DAS, and AS. VF series valves, all from Rainbirds. This universal kit works on pretty much everything. Comes with new screws and a new filter and a new diaphragm. So I don't think I'm going to need that in this case. Um, so I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. We'll throw it back together and see if that solves the problem. The diaphragm cleaned up real nicely. I don't see any obvious problems with it. So I'm just going to assume this problem was due to dirt. So I'm going to just blip the pump on for a second just to flush out the line if there's anything else in there. Just like that, and we're done doing that all from my smartphone that's why it's happening so quick all right let's shut this off and put it back together okay time to put it back together it only goes in one way you want to make sure that that little I'll show you that little spot at the bottom there it's not going to focus of course but you'll see a little hole that's not anywhere else on the on the diaphragm that goes towards the output side so I also took the other half of the valve and I flushed this out with some uh, some garden hose water just to make sure there was no debris in here. Yeah, I should probably take a good look in there. I don't see anything else. It looks pretty clear. So we're just going to put it back together. And when you put the screws in, I would tighten them in an alternate, alternating pattern. And uh, don't tighten them too tight. This is just plastic after all. So I got one top left corner, one bottom right. Just to kind of hold it in place. I'll just kind of snug up the other screws. Set the clutch in this thing just so we're not tightening them too much. Put one over here. Oh, this needs a little bit more clutch. There we go. One over here. And one bottom left. Snug them all up a little bit. Again, this is just plastic, so don't tighten them down too much. A little more clutch. All right, so that's that. Now it's time to do another test and see if I broke anything. All right, time to turn this zone on. See if I did anything wrong and it'll fail spectacularly, right? Okay, so in theory it's on. Let's go check the backyard, see if it came on. It did indeed come on. All right, so now let's turn this zone off. Let's turn one on elsewhere in the yard and see if this solved our problem. Turn that one off. Turn this one on, get some water by the mango tree. All right, let's go check it out. Okay, I've got another sprinkler zone running. I notice that the water is now slowing down. It's nowhere near as uh, voluminous, if that's a word, as it was before. You do have to give it a couple minutes to, to, to wait for the water to stop though, because especially if this is the last sprinkler on the zone, which I think it is, there's gonna be water in the pipes. It's gonna gravity drain. So wait a minute or two, then you can pull the sprinkler head up and see if you see any water coming out. And notice there is none now. So that solved our problem. Zero dollars in parts. I could go return that kit now. If you wanted to. Or just keep one around. Now this problem is probably more likely to occur if you do draw your water from a lake or a canal or some non-city source. Because obviously there's more... The likelihood of getting debris in there is higher. Uh, I do have a screen on mine. I'm not sure how those little rocks get in there. Maybe got in there. Maybe I was doing work on one of the, on one of the zones and accidentally got debris in there. Not really sure. But... Anyway, that concludes this video. Hopefully uh, someone found this helpful. 
Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe and stay safe, everybody. Thanks for watching. What did you do? What did you do? Did you do that? Is that what you did while I was fixing the sprinklers? Hmm? So guilty. Yeah. Dogs will be dogs.